Calypso Gallery. Joining us here today is Heather Horton. We're going to be getting some insight into her process and be looking at some of her paintings here. Heather's been with the gallery for about eight years, and this is your fourth solo exhibition, right? Yeah. So the title of the show, Surfacing, it seems fitting in a lot of ways, but tell us sort of in your own words how you came to that title for the show. Well, it's borrowed partially from Margaret Atwood's book, Surfacing, which I read in university. And the title evolved really after I did uh, some portraits of my friend it's swimming through water. I thought, you know, you know, it is a metaphor, and, and I just, I loved those paintings so much, and I thought, why don't I just call the whole thing surfacing? It's sort of like the other one is passages, and now it's, so it's sort of a metaphor for stages of life, really. So, we've noticed that this exhibition has a lot of emphasis on figurative paintings, and a lot of the questions that viewers have when they come into the show is, um, you know, how do you arrive at these pieces? Because it's clear that there is a relationship that you have with your sitter and it goes into this sort of um, tradition of more intensive portraiture like Thomas Aikens or Lucien Freud, so. Well, I paint myself, I paint friends, family. Um, I never really have a plan. I have more of an idea of what I want to do and then I think, well, do I know anyone that's free for a, for a shoot? If I don't, I tend to paint myself. So mm -hmm. it, it I come to why I paint what I paint and who I paint what I paint through different reasons. Some paintings, their genesis is immediately autobiographical. I want to paint myself in said place. Then, oftentimes, friends and their environments really inspire me. A lot of the Gale paintings are, are an example sure. of that. And so their space is just as inspiring as any other place and, and I'm just I have to paint it and so I have to paint them in situ in that place. Um, and then other times I just randomly find people and ask if I can paint them. This doesn't happen as often but it does happen. Where just a person's look and I just think what the heck I'm gonna ask if I can paint them. How do, how do they respond to that? I've never had anyone say no. Huh. So that's and I give them my card so that they know that I'm not you know a wacko. <laughs> And uh, so it, it's worked out well so far, but typically it's loved ones and friends and myself. Let's talk about this piece. Um, it's called Tina with her bass. I understand that the impetus for this painting came from the sitter's hands. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yes, I met Tina a while ago and I was immediately taken with her hands. I always notice people's hands because they're just so much fun to paint. Mm -hmm. Hands and feet. Most people shy away from painting hands and feet, but I really like it because they're so expressive and they're the way that we interact most immediately with the world a lot. And so when I saw her hands, I thought, oh my gosh, she has piano painter or piano player's hands and I have to paint them. And so I asked, can I paint you? And she said yes, and so I went to her place and then I thought, well, what can we what's the environment, what can we do here? And so it's pretty simple, but her bass is incredibly important to her. Music's very important to her. And I just wanted to try my best to capture the expressiveness of her hands. And you can kind of hopefully discern that she feels comfortable and just happy being with bass. Mm. Yeah. Now, Heather, could you tell us a little bit about this painting? Because when we looked at the title, we thought, why is this called Carrie Aware? This painting has a bit of an interesting story behind it. Uh, I was at my friend Carrie's house and she has a lovely room with this big beautiful duvet and I thought perfect. So I go to her house and we were setting up the shot and I noticed this baseball bat, you know, leaning against the door and so I'm like, I asked. You know, because Carrie's so cool and so eccentric. I'm like, what? You know, what's the story? I knew there'd be some like, or I, or I thought, well, maybe it's just maybe it's just her, one of her kids' bats, and you know, from school. And I'm like, you know, is that one of one of the boys' bats? And she's like, no, that's for self defense, for home defense. I'm like, that's awesome. So I thought, you know, let's not even move it. I didn't place it. I don't like staging things. I don't like placing things. It's very rare that I'll do something for a painting, like setting something in a place. If it's not there, it wasn't really true, like it wasn't real life. So that was just there. I'm like, this is perfect. It'll be... There's an irony, right, in the title, because she appears to be unaware and sleeping. But in reality, she's awake <laughs> and quite aware. And so that was how it it came to be. I like things that are subtle. So that's kind of like a, like an overarching symbol of my work is subtlety. You know, nothing overt. So that's another example. 
There are a few themes in the show that, let's just say, you've revisited um, some landscapes, some draped figures. But what we noticed uh, in this particular show is that um, there are some new themes, specifically the prevalence of water. So in the form of baths or pools, um, lakes. Um, this one in particular is uh, called What Frida Taught Me. Now, what this is, is this you or? It's me, yes. Uh, I was in the Yukon uh, doing some hiking and house sitting and painting mm -hmm. up there. And uh, I just, I, I've painted something like this before. It was a different view, a more foreshortened view. This was years ago. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do another painting like that because it'll be different and yet similar to the other one. Plus, it's also a nod to Frida Kahlo's painting, What the Water Gave Me, which is uh, a, a view of her legs in the tub with Diego and like all this imagery, of course, in, in her painting. So I thought it was just kind of a subtle little just nod to how inspirational she is. And I really wanted to see the objective with this painting was to see if I could paint just the illusion, the translucence of water. It's, when water's choppy, it's more clearly evident that it's there. But when you're in a tub, if it's not sloshing all over the place, it's, you know, you really only have certain things that delineate where it is and where right. it isn't. So it's much more subtle, and I wanted to see if I could do that. Plus, I just like the idea of trying to capture just what happens when that water separates the skin from your eye versus right. here, where it breaks the, breaks the water here and just that tonal difference. I'm just, mm -hmm. half, the, half the things I paint are just like sort of answering the question, can I paint it up to my expectations? Does it, you know, fulfill what I want it to do? Does it convey what, convey what I want it to do? And the other paintings too, the, the swimming paintings, I mean, water really is another form of fabric. And I love to paint fabric and, and people drape uh, figures. So it's just another uh, type of fabric, really, mm -hmm. you know? And there, there's patterns in each and there's similarities in each. Mm -hmm. And also with water too, I mean, it, it has the ability to cleanse, and, you know, it, it, we have, we're 80% we're water. Like sure. It's just, I could paint it forever and ever.